In this video, we will practice our function composition. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.7. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Use the given information above to evaluate the following, if possible. Number 16. For this notation, we work from the inside out. So we are going to start by evaluating g at 4. Here's function g. Here is the input value of 4, so the value of g at 4 is 3. Working outward, we get to function f. f at g at 4 now becomes f at 3. Here is function f, and here is the input value of 3. The value of f at 3 is 2. So that's the answer for number 16. For the composite notation with the open circle, you work from right to left. So first we do f at 6. Here's function f, and here is the input value of 6. So is the value of f at 6 down here at negative 1 or up here at positive 2? It's at positive 2. It's always the closed circle, never the open circle. So f at 6 is 2. Moving to the left, it's time to evaluate function g at the 2. Here's function g, and here is the input value of 2. g at 2 is 1. That's it for number 17. Number 18, again for the open circle notation, we work from right to left. So first we do g at negative 2. Here's function g, and here is the input value of negative 2. g at negative 2 is 3. Sliding on to the left, we get to the second g, but now we are doing g at 3. Here's function g again. Here is the input value of 3. g at 3 is 2. That's it. Number 19, we work from the inside out, so we begin with f at pi. Here's function f. Pi is approximately 3.14, so it's gonna be right about here. f at pi is two. Now moving to the outer function p, we need to find p at two. Here's function p right here. p at 2 is negative 1. That's all. Number 20. For the open circle notation, we work from right to left. So we begin with g at 8. Here's the input value of 8. So g at 8 is 4. Sliding to the left, we must evaluate function f at 4. Here is the input value of 4, but all we see at 4 is an open circle. There's nothing else, so f at 4 is undefined. Therefore, the composite function is also undefined. 21. Working from right to left, we begin with h at 0. h is this piecewise function. For a piecewise function, your first task is to decide which piece applies. These little statements on the right give us the domain of each piece. Hmm, zero. Zero is less than two. That tells us that the first piece applies. So plugging in zero right here for x, we end up with eight times one half to the zero power. One half to the zero power is one. So this is eight times one, which is eight. Sliding to the left, we arrive at function g. We must evaluate g at 8. Here is the input value of 8, and g at 8 is 4. That's it. 22. Working from the inside out, we begin with f at 6. Here's the input value of 6, 
and we pick the closed circle, not the open circle. So f at 6 is 2. Next we do h at 2. h at 2 means x equals 2. That means the middle piece applies. So we are plugging in 2 for x right here. That will give us 1 minus 2 squared, 1 minus 4, that's negative 3. That's the answer. 23. For the open circle notation, we work from right to left. So we begin with f at negative 3. Here is the input value of negative 3. So f at negative 3 is negative 1. Moving on to the left, we do p at negative 1. p at negative 1 is e. So the answer is e. 24. Working from right to left, we begin with p at 6. p at 6 is 1. Next, we move on to h. h at 1. Ah, the piecewise function again. x equals 1, that's less than 2. That means the top piece applies. So we have 8 times 1 half to the 1 power. In other words, just half times 8, which is 4. So the answer is 4. Number 25. For this notation, we work from the inside out. So we begin with h at 7. h at 7 means x equals 7, which is definitely greater than 3, which means the third piece applies. And this 4 just means that h at 7 is 4. Moving to the left, we arrive at m. m at 4. We have not talked about function m yet, so we need to take a minute to define it. The function m is the result of applying three transformations to the graph of g in this order, a vertical dilation by a factor of 2, a vertical translation by negative 3 units, and a horizontal translation by 1 unit. A vertical dilation by a factor of 2 means we will have a 2 out in the front of g. A horizontal translation by 1 unit will show up in here as x minus 1. Positive 1 shows up as x minus 1. If this were negative 1 unit, I would put x plus 1. A vertical translation by negative 3 units will show up on the end as a minus 3. m at 4 means plugging 4 in for x right here. So m at 4 is 2 times g at 4 minus 1, which is 3, minus 3. To evaluate this expression, we need g at 3. g at 3 is 2. So this expression becomes 2 times 2 minus 3. That's 4 minus 3, which is 1. So that's the answer. 26. Working from right to left, we begin with m at negative 1. That means plug negative 1 in for x right here. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So this becomes 2 times g at negative 2 minus 3. But what is g at negative 2? g at negative 2 is 3. So this becomes 2 times 3 minus 3. That is 6 minus 3, which is 3. Moving on to the second m, we must now evaluate m at 3. m at 3 means plugging in 3 for x right here. 3 minus 1 is 2. So we get 2 times g at 2 minus 3. But what is g at 2? g at 2 is 1. So this expression becomes 2 times 1 
minus 3, or 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. That's it. 27. Working from right to left, we begin with f at 8. f at 8 is negative 3. Moving to the left, we next evaluate p at negative 3. Interesting, p at negative 3 is f at 6. f at 6 is 2, not negative 1, always the closed circle, never the open circle. f at 6 is 2. And that's the final answer for number 27. Number 28, for this notation we work from the inside out, so we begin with m at 1. This means plug 1 in for x right here. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the expression becomes 2 times g at 0 minus 3. But what is g at 0? g at 0 is 2. So this expression becomes 2 times 2 minus 3. That's 4 minus 3, which is 1. Moving to the outside, we must now evaluate f at 1. f at 1 is negative 1. So that's the answer. 29. For the open circle composite notation, we work from right to left. So we begin with p at 9. p at 9 is 3. Moving to the left, we must now evaluate f at 3. f at 3 is 2. Moving to the left once more, we evaluate m at 2. But m at 2 means plugging 2 in for x right here. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we end up with 2 times g at 1 minus 3. But what is g at 1? g at 1 is 1.5. 2 times 1.5 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Number 30, working from the inside out, we begin with h at 2. h at 2 means x equals 2, so this piece of the piecewise function applies. Plugging 2 in for x gives us 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Moving to the outside, we must now evaluate h at negative 3. Negative 3 is less than 2, so this piece of the piecewise function applies. Plugging in negative 3 for x right here gives us 8 times 1 half to the negative 3 power. Here's kind of a shortcut that's worth knowing. When you apply a negative exponent to a fraction, you can flip the fraction and make the exponent positive. So a over b to the negative c power is the same as b over a to the positive c power. So 1 over 2 to the negative 3 power is the same thing as 2 over 1 to the positive 3 power. 2 to the third power is 8, and 8 times 8 is 64. So that's the answer for number 30. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.